welcome back. There are many modes of communication in amateur radio, Morse code, analog voice, digital voice, imaging, text and data, spread spectrum, and even high-speed multimedia radio networking using the 802.11 protocols, like the ones that's used in uh, wireless internet. With each of these modes, there is a plethora of activities to learn and experience. My point is that radio is far from what most people realize or even care about, at least not until disaster strikes and we were there using every mode at our disposal to render aid and comfort. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started then. This video is lesson four, part one of my amateur radio technician class license course covering the 2022 to the 2026 question pool. Hi, I'm Gary Stevens, your instructor. My call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. I hold an extra license. I've been an amateur operator since 2001, an amateur extra since 2014, and I've been teaching amateur radio classes for over 15 years now. The T4 section covers amateur radio practices. On your exam, there will be two questions at random from this sub-element. There are two groups totaling 24 questions. In this video, we're going to talk about station setup. Connecting a microphone, a power source, a computer, digital equipment, an SWR meter, bonding. And we're going to talk about mobile radio installation. We should understand that 13.8 volts at 12 amperes is the appropriate power supply rating for the typical 50 watt output mobile FM transceiver. This page is from the specifications of an FT7900R manual. It's a dual band 2 meter 70 centimeter transceiver capable of 50 watts on 2 meters. We can see that the power consumption for transmitting is 8.5 amps. We should always go higher than that requirement, else we run the risk of blowing a fuse. 12 amperes is ideal. As a side note, the accessory jack in a car or truck can vary from 10 to 25 amps depending on the make, model, and manufacturer. Be careful not to exceed that with your transceiver. On the exam, our question is, which of the following is the appropriate power supply rating for the typical 50 watt output mobile FM transceiver? A, 24 volts at four amperes. B, 13.8 volts at four amperes. C, 24 volts at 12 amperes. D, 13.8 volts at 12 amperes. The correct answer is D, 13.8 volts at 12 amperes. We should know that the, the frequency and power level at which the measurement will be made should be considered when selecting an accessory SWR meter. SWR stands for standing wave ratio. In this slide, we can see the Diamond SX600 SWR power meter that I own. Notice the power level switch next to where the model is located at, on the bottom. We can select 5 watts, 20 watts, or 200 watts. If we tried to measure with too low of a wattage setting, it could damage the internal components. The inputs and outputs on the back are where the frequency selections are determined. On the left is UHF, VHF, and on the right is HF. On this model, the sensor selection switch needs to be in the correct setting as well. Our test question is, which of the following should be considered when selecting an accessory SWR meter? A, the frequency and power level at which the measurement will be made. B, the distance that the meter will be located from the antenna. C, the types of modulation being used at the station. D, all these choices are correct. The correct answer for this question is A, the frequency and power levels at which the measurements will be made. We should know 
Short heavy gauge wires are used for a transceiver's DC power connection in order to minimize voltage drop when transmitting. If we look back at the FT7900 user manual, we can see that this transceiver states that if you extend the power cable, you should use 12 gauge or larger insulated standard copper wire. Keeping it as short as possible lowers the current loss and prevents the cable from overheating. Voltage drops can occur when the length of the wire becomes too long. Our question is, why are short heavy gauge wires used for transceiver DC power connections? A, to minimize voltage drops when transmitting. B, to provide a good counterpose for the antenna. C, to avoid RF interference. Or D, all these choices are correct. The answer we should give is A, to minimize voltage drop when transmitting. We need to know that transceiver audio input and output are connected to the station configured to operating using FT8 to the audio input and output of the computer running the WSJT-X software. WSJT-X is a computer program designed to facilitate basic amateur radio communications using very weak signals. The software supports communications using FST4, FST4W, FT4, FT8, JT4, JT9, JT65, Q65, MSK144, and WSPR protocols. WSPR meaning whisper. How far can you communicate using a weak signal with digital protocols? This map shows how far my signal could be heard on the 40 meter band using only a half watt of power, 0.5 watts. To connect our transceiver to computer requires some types of interface. Here is a partial schematic of an interface that uses a computer sound card. Notice the sound card speaker is used to connect the, to the radio microphone using an isolation transformer. We connect the radio speaker to the microphone input of the sound card using the same method. The exam question is this, how are the transceiver audio input and output connected in a station configured to operate using FT8? A, to a computer running a terminal program and connected to a terminal node controller unit. B, to the audio input and output of a computer running WSJT-X software, C, to an FT8 conversion unit, a keyboard and computer monitor, or D, to a computer connected to the FT8converter.com website. The answer is, of course, B, the audio input and output of computer running WSJT-X software. We should know that we should install an RF power meter in the feed line between the transmitter and antenna. Notice the top connector on this SX-600 has a label antenna for the antenna and the lower one is labeled TX for transmitter. If we make the right connections, it should look something like this illustration. Our test question reads, where should the RF power meter be installed? A, in the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. B, at the power supply output. C, in parallel with the push to talk line and the antenna. D, in the power supply cable as close as possible to the radio. The correct answer being A, in the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. Understand that receive audio, transmit audio, and transmitter key and signals are used in a computer radio interface for digital mode operation. This slide shows a complete schematic on an interface to connect a transceiver to a computer for digital mode operations. The audio out is the receive audio, the mic transmits audio, and PTT is the transmitter keying. 
The test question asks, what signals are used in a computer radio interface for digital mode operation? A, receive and transmit mode status and location. B, antenna and RF power. C, receive audio, transmit audio, and transmitter keying. D, NMEA, GPS location, and DC power. The correct answer is C, receive audio, transmit audio, and transmitter keying. We need to know that the computer line in to transceiver speaker connector connection is made between a computer and a transceiver to use computer software when operating digital modes. When you think about where the incoming sound is audible and where it should be sent, it makes perfect sense to connect the transceiver speaker output to the computer's line input. The text question may look like this. Which of the following connections is made between a computer and a transceiver to use computer software when operating digital modes? A, computer line out to transceiver push to talk. B, computer line in to transceiver push to talk. C, computer line in to transceiver speaker connector. D, computer line out to transceiver speaker connector. We should select the correct answer. C, computer line in to transceiver speaker connector. Know that a flat copper strap is a conductor that is preferred for bonding RF. Bonding RF is synonymous with RF grounding. RF energy is undesirable around our equipment. It's a good practice to ground our station equipment with a common bond. Flat copper straps are the best for capturing stray RF and sending them to ground. Pictured here are some copper bonding strap jumpers. The associated question is, which of the following conductors is preferred for bonding RF? A, copper braid removed from coaxial cable. B, steel wire. C, twisted pair cable. D, flat copper strap. The correct answer is D, flat copper strap. Keep in mind that in order to determine the length of time that equipment can be powered from a battery, Divide the battery ampere hour rating by the average current draw of the equipment. Let's say we have the Yaesu FT7900R like in the previous example. The specifications tell us the receive current is 0.5 amperes and the transmit current is 8.5 amperes. Let's say we have a seven amp hour battery in our go bag. If we believe we will talk 25% of the time and listen 75% of the time, we can calculate our hourly consumption at 2.5 amperes. We divide that into the number of amp hours they rated our battery for and end up with 2.8 hours. The exam question is, how can you determine the length of time that equipment can be powered from a battery? A, divide the watt hour rating of the battery by the peak power consumption of the equipment. B, divide the battery amp hour rating by the average current draw of the equipment. C, multiply the watt per hour consumed by the equipment by the battery power rating. D, multiply the square of the current rating of the battery by the input resistance of the equipment. Our answer is B, divide the battery amp hour rating by the average current draw of the equipment. We should know communication using digital voice or data systems via the internet is a function that is performed with a transceiver and a digital mode hotspot. Amateur digital mobile radios have been around since 2010, but were not approved for amateur use until 2014. Hotspots are devices that allow DMR transmission to travel over the internet to other locations. The test question looks like this. 
One function is performed with a transceiver and a digital mode hotspot. A, communications using digital voice and data systems via the internet. B, FT8 digital communications via AFSK. C, RTTY encoding and decoding without a computer. Or D, high-speed digital communications for meteor scatter. The correct answer is A, communications using digital voice or data systems via the internet. We should remember that the negative power return of a mobile transceiver should be connected in a vehicle at 12 volt battery chassis ground. This slide shows chassis ground. Notice the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the chassis and not elsewhere. Some user manuals like the FT7900R say to connect directly to the battery. It can be argued that this is chassis ground, but let's not go there. Learn the test answer and leave the debate to engineers. Our question reads, where should the negative power return of a mobile transceiver be connected in a vehicle? A, the 12 volt battery chassis ground. B, at the antenna mount. C, any metal part of the vehicle. Or D, through the transmitter's mounting bracket. The correct answer for the exam is A, at the 12 volt battery chassis ground. Know that a device that assists in manual sending of Morse code is an electronic keyer. There are many commercial keyers available. Some transceivers even have keyer functions built in. In the next clip, I will show my practice keyer using homemade paddles. Notice that in one direction it generates dots and in the other dashes. The exam question is, what is an electronic keyer? A, a device for switching antennas from transmit to receive. B, a device for voice activated switching from receive to transmit. C, a device that assists in the manual sending of Morse code. D, an interlock to prevent unauthorized use of a radio. The answer is of course C, a device that assists and the manual sending of Morse code. This is the end of lesson four, part one. I hope that as we examine each question in the technician pool, you're gaining more knowledge and getting the confidence you need to pass the exam. Some of you will get this information the first time, and a good portion of you may need to watch the lessons a few times to master the information. Either way, I have faith in you and your ability to pass the exam. The Greek philosopher Plato said, human behavior flows from three main sources, desire, emotion, and knowledge. You are here because you desire to learn. I'm doing my best to provide you with the knowledge. Believing you can pass the exam is your emotion in action. Please check the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, my friends. Never stop learning.